Chapter 6 Why the Seedline Doctrine Exists A Psychological Study Whenever we examine a doctrine, we should try to ascertain why it exists, or what is the motive behind the doctrine. In other words, why do people believe or not believe in something? Is it because of faith, or is it because of preconditioning, social pressure, emotional appeal, self-righteousness, monetary security, or false piety? Thus, the question of why a doctrine exists is a subject of psychology. The study of dealing with the mind and with mental and emotional processes. It helps us understand human nature and what causes the mind and heart to act the way they do. The Bible has much to tell us about psychology. It discusses the corrupt inner nature of man, the various virtues and vices people can have and why they have them, and tells us of the human heart and mind and how they function. The Bible tells us that people tend to believe something because it appeals to their inner nature, not because of sound reasoning on the matter. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 5, verse 31 The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. 2 Timothy 4, verses 3-4 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, wanting to have their ears tickled, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fables. Isaiah 30, verses 9 and 10 This is a rebellious people which say to the seers, Do not see, and to the prophets, Do not prophesy unto us right things, Speak to us smooth things, prophesy deceits. The Bible has many examples showing how people will follow, believe, or adopt a concept or doctrine because of its appeal to their personal values or inner nature. Truth and the Word of God will be rejected when such doctrines are presented. Many popular Christian doctrines exist for this reason. For instance, the popular doctrine that people go to heaven when they die has no scriptural foundation. What the Bible does say is that in death, man and beast are the same. They both rot in the ground and return to dust, and possess no state of consciousness. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 19-20, through 20, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5, Isaiah 38, verse 18. This truth, however, is not appealing to our nature. Thus we accept the fable that we go to heaven to be with Jesus and sit in the clouds because of its greater appeal. If we don't understand true human psychology, we are destined to fall into the traps and snares of our lusts, ego, vanity, emotions, and heart, which is deceitful above all things. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Now, why does this satanic seedline doctrine exist? After all, if you told some Christian that a certain belief can be found in paganism, Gnosticism, and Judaism, and is embraced in Masonic and Talmudic literature, they would stay away from it. So why then do people believe in the Satanic Seed Line Doctrine? The reason is to be found by a psychological study of the subject. Elements of the Seed Line Doctrine the Satanic Seedline Doctrine has an appeal or seems right because many of the basic elements which make it up exist in Scripture. The concept of Seedline, as stated, exists throughout the Bible. The concept of Satanic, or that which is evil or in opposition to God, is certainly scriptural. Satanic persons, those who hate and are against God, are also quite prevalent in Scripture. But what about a satanic seed line? The existence of such a thing is also in Scripture. The Amalekites were an ungodly people who were always against God's chosen people. Thus, God said that he will, quote, have war with Amalek from generation to generation, end quote. Exodus 17, verse 16. The seven Canaanite nations were so contrary to God that he told Israel to eliminate every last man, woman, and child 
Deuteronomy 20, verse 17. Thus, as a race, these nations were satanic without any redeeming qualities. The Edomites also constituted a satanic seed line, as they were always ungodly and against God's people. Jesus spoke of the tares, or children of the wicked, who are contrasted with the good seed. The tares are apparently a satanic group of people. So the question is not if satanic seed lines exist, but why they exist. It seems that all of the satanic seed lines that existed in Scripture were due to the fact that one of their ancestors were cursed or rejected by God. Which brings us to Cain. Cain was cursed and rejected by God. Cain had a seed line. Cain's curse and rejection would come upon his descendants. It thus is only logical that Cain's seed line would be ungodly and that an enmity would exist between his seed line and God's chosen seed line through Seth, Noah, and Abraham. It seems to be generally accepted by Bible scholars that this situation existed. So we see that many of the elements of the Cain Satanic Seed Line doctrine do exist in Scripture. The question or issue is not that a Cain Satanic Seed Line existed, but to what extent they existed in the past, and why their enmity and ungodliness existed. The enmity and Satanic nature was due to God's curse and rejection of Cain because of Cain's act of murder. It was not due to Eve having sex with a supernatural satanic being. Evil within or without An analysis of the human heart and mind reveals an interesting fact about how we tend to perceive such things as evil, corruption, enemies, or problems in our lives and in the world. We naturally want such things to come from without our personal domain, rather than from within it. It is unsettling to our nature, and thus hard for us to accept, that evil or harmful things should come from within ourselves, our family, our government, our nation, our race, or our God. It is much more appealing, and thus easier to accept, that such things come from outside ourselves, our family, our government, etc. Let us look at some illustrations of this psychological concept. 1. When a problem arises among two or more people, there is a natural tendency to blame the other person or persons for the problem, rather than ourselves, even if our accusation is obviously false. 2. When you tell someone of the evil, corruption, and harmful things their own government is doing, they reject it and don't want to hear it. But if you tell them lies and distortions about the corruption or evil acts done by some dictator or leader in a foreign country, they will accept it. 3. A parent will accept lies about the unruly nature or wrongdoing of other children, but will naturally reject the truth of such matters in regards to their own children. 4. Christians have always had a difficult time accepting that their God causes evil, plagues and troubles in their lives and nation, regardless of all the supporting evidence in Scripture. Thus, in their minds, they had to conjure up another God, a God of evil, who causes wicked people and tribulation in the world. They call this God Satan, or the devil, and fear it as they should be fearing the true God. It is acceptable because evil now comes from without. 5. Many Americans today are concerned about aliens from outer space and how they are going to control or affect things in their nation. But they have no concern for the aliens that are on this planet and already in America. The alien problem is within, not without. 6. Man tends to look at evil and sin as problems being without, while denying or ignoring that which is within himself, or his own carnal nature. As Christ said, That whatsoever from without enters into a man, it cannot defile him. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thought, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, 
lasciviousness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Mark 7, verses 18-23 through 23. Note that Christ never blamed the devil or Satan for the evil and corruption in the world. He is telling us to look within ourselves for evil and sin. The closer we look within ourselves, our race, our government, etc., the closer we will get to the real source of the problems and evils that affect us. But this is unpleasing to our sensibility and offends our ego and pride. Thus, we want the evil and problems which touch our lives to come from without, and will accept lies and falsehoods which say it is so. The farther away the source of evil and problems is, the more acceptable it is to our nature. Now let us look at the Jewish problem. Almost everyone can recognize that there is a spirit of ungodliness and anti-Christianity within the people known as Jews. Throughout all of history, we have examples of Jewish hostility toward white Christians and the harmful effects Jews have had on the European nations. They have clearly been as aliens in our midst, destroying our way of life. Israel of old also suffered much from captivities and alien control over their life, liberty, and property. But Israel's problem was never the Canaanites, Philistines, or Assyrians. It was within their nation, their race, and their own hearts and minds. The same is true regarding the Jew. Their ungodliness and cursed ways would not have any effect on us if we did not have problems within ourselves such as believing they are God's chosen people, or that all people are equal. The Jews are a problem just like the fox is a problem. If we are so foolish to ignore the innate characteristics foxes have exhibited throughout the centuries and believe the humanistic tripe that they are equal with all the other farm animals and thus allow them equal access to the farmyard, then we have no one to blame but ourselves for the loss of chickens from the chicken coop. Again, the question is not that the Jews are ungodly or satanic, but why they are this way. And this gets to the error of the satanic seed line doctrine. This doctrine has the source of the evil and ungodliness associated with the Jews coming from outside the Adamic race and outside of God. The evil and ungodliness of the Jews is actually derived from certain members of our race, the white Adamic race, which have been cursed or rejected by our God. Persons such as Cain, Canaan, Ishmael, Esau, Amalek, the evil figs of Judah, and the Judeans who rejected Christ were all of the white Adamic race. All of these people were cursed by God, not by Satan, and thus their descendants would be against God and his people. Throughout the centuries, these cursed and rejected people have mixed with other peoples, becoming the Jews of today. Footnote. For more information on this, see Jewish Identity by the author. End footnote. It should not be surprising that the great enemy of the white Christian people is composed of degenerates and rejects of their own race. Most of Israel's enemies were offshoots of the white Adamic race, such as the Midianites, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Amalekites, and even some of the Canaanites. Proponents of the Satanic Seed Line doctrine find it more appealing to have Cain be non-Adamic by having his father be the serpent or Satan. This places the source of evil in the Jews coming from an outside source, that being from outside of the white Adamic race and outside of God's work. By this doctrine, all the evil we see in the Jews comes from Satan's seed, resulting in a satanic disposition of a spiritual and genetic nature within Cain and his descendants. This is not in accord with the Bible, which reveals that evil things, whether spiritual or physical, come only from God. 1 Kings 18, verse 10, Isaiah 45, verse 7, Proverbs 16, verse 4, and not from some devil. The fact that Cain was of Adam should be no more difficult to accept than the fact that Esau or Canaan were Adamic, or our racial brothers. It should be no more difficult to accept than the fact that it was Israelites who killed the prophets, 
and committed gross acts of idolatry. Identity adherents have also succumbed to this same psychological problem by their making the Jews in the New Testament as being Edomites, Canaanites, or a mixed-race people. If you believe that you are an Israelite, then as a Christian it is naturally hard to accept that Israelites were against Christ and wanted to kill him. It is much more appealing to have these people be of an enemy race than of your own race. The truth is, these Jews or Judeans were Israelites, though many of their descendants became a part of the hybrid Jews of today. Satanic seedline advocates see an inherent evil and anti-Christian nature in Jews and want to separate themselves from the Jews by having the source of evil come from outside their race. To do so, their doctrine had to be based upon speculation and bad interpretation, and is thus false.